Aloha and welcome to, Fi oh no, this isn't Figments. I'm the Dan Lee, go by Fig, usually the host of Figments, the Power of Imagination, but today I get the guest host, Military in Hawaii, here on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, we got a great topic today. We're going to talk about one of the military academies. We might talk a little bit about all of them, but in this case, specifically West Point. And West Point is a pathway to becoming a commission officer in the United States Army specifically. I like to say the commissioned officers are the most powerful people in the country, not in terms of having power over, say, the president or the Senate or Congress, but they, even a second lieutenant, make federal law by issuing a lawful order. And our young adults, young men and women from Hawaii, can become commissioned officers in the Army through West Point. So how do I know that? <laughs> I applied to West Point and was turned down, but I have friends, including today's guest, Bruce Fink, who is a graduate of West Point, class of 79. Aloha, Bruce. Aloha, Fink. Welcome. Thank you me. are a graduate. I know this because we play golf together and you've been a guest on uh, Figments. You're also a cancer survivor and a great friend. So tell me a bit about West Point and its important role in your family's history. Well, my, my dad and both brothers were graduates of West Point, so that's sort of how I got there. Uh, not just because of them, but because I knew of it. And there are various paths to get there. I was, because I was the son of a military officer, able to get a presidential mm -hmm. nomination because you move around a lot. But you normally get nominations through your senators or congressmen. And if you're interested, it's it's a lengthy process, but it's not a hard process. Well, we'll get to that process a bit later, as you know. Uh, but this has been part of your life. You graduated. Okay, folks, we're going to admit to being a uh, Kapuna here. You graduated 43 years ago in the class of 1979, right? That's correct. Last all-male class, by the way. And um, we won't hold that against you. Thank you. And, but you still say, you know, this is an important thing to you in your the screenshot that our viewers see. You're surrounded by West Point memorabilia. I know you're active in the Association of Graduates, Association of Graduates from West Point. Not sure that's the right title here. In yeah, Hawaii. that's correct. But it is a thread of your DNA, isn't it? It's not just a diploma from a university. Yeah, and the mission of the academy is for lifetime of service. So it doesn't end when you finish West Point. It doesn't end when you finish military service. It's for your entire life. I'm still serving, even though I've finished my regular career, I'm still serving in various community activities. I think you had a distinguished military career and then a civilian career at, into PACOM, then PACOM, where we served together. At, but um, that the fact that the service academies, and in this case, West Point, truly are life-enabling education is something we want to share with viewers to interest young folks. Now, uh, I realize that your average 17 or 18-year-old uh, would be not normal if they didn't look with a little skepticism at what folks our age have to say. It's the nature of life. Uh, they are living in a different era than we were growing up in. Um, but we'll talk about why we, why you think it's a, a relevant path. First, I'd like to share your story because it's a cool story. And the story uh, of your life in the Army and life beyond the Army kind of starts with graduation, that moment at West Point where you enjoyed four rig rigorous, demanding, difficult years and you finally get commissioned as a second lieutenant, U.S. Army. There's the moment. What do you remember about the moment? Well, yeah, I, I remember thinking that uh, General Andrew Goodpaster, who was the man in the white uniform, giving me my mm -hmm. diploma. We we thought of him like a grandfather, and uh, I just looked up his age at that point in time. He was sixty four. And, and how was, old are you now? 64? I'm now sixty five. Uh huh. So I'm a year older than he was in that picture. So I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get as old as he is, but I did. 
Well, thankfully, we're in an era where being our age isn't is is better than it used to be. I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, so you you left West Point as a graduate and embarked on a twenty year Army career. Um, and I think it's interesting and important to the audience to talk about what you did because it you, you might tend to um, to think that everybody in the army drives tanks or is a rifleman uh, or an aviator, but you were a combat engineer. Right. I started out in an infantry division as a combat engineer. And then I went to Korea for a year and did construction. And mm -hmm. then I was back in the same infantry division as a combat engineer. After graduate school, I went to Japan to do construction, then back into a combat engineer unit uh, with some schools thrown in between uh, before I came here to Hawaii and worked at Pacific Command for four years in the engineer division. It's a very uh, career in, in the Corps of Engineers. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit. I kind of know because I served with the Army a lot during my career, uh, including with 2nd Infantry Division and uh, the Republic of Korea. But an engineer in the Army doesn't drive trains. Just to clarify that, I had to understand that as I get it. But what does an Army engineer do, do in an infantry division? What are you engineering, for Pete's sake? A lot of times in, in the both the offense and the defense, you're out in front of the infantry and the armor either clearing obstacles or creating obstacles. Uh, there's mm -hmm. uh, places that we go and train, like the National Training Center, where you actually go out and, and, and plant mines, and, and then you clear things like mines and, and tank traps and barbed wire and other things that would stop the infantry and armor from advancing. So the engineers so, tend to be out in front a lot. So I, I remember a mantra from my time serving on the ground with the Army, including in combat, uh, and go, being at their school at Leavenworth and teaching there, move, shoot, and communicate, right? Um, and it seems to me that you can't move if the engineers don't make it possible. Yeah, and we, we had guaranteed job security. We would build things and then blow them up. <laughs> nice. But interestingly, and I also know this to be true from working with the Corps of Engineers, the Army Corps of Engineers. You also, in peacetime, both at home and abroad, Army engineers have important environmental roles too. Yes. Yeah, they're, um, in fact, probably most known in Hawaii right now for the Alawai project, which mm -hmm. you know had had gotten to the point of they wanted to move forward with it, but because of a lot of public input, that's been put on hold. Uh, and they're, you know, they're doing a lot of that sort of work around Hawaii every day that you just don't notice. Uh, harbors and dredging and things like that, that the Corps of Engineers is responsible for. And all of that, they have to do in an environmentally conscious way. So that's one of the many career paths you could take if you go to West Point and get commissioned. You could be an infantry officer, a tank driver, a helicopter pilot, or any of the uh, an other a number of other uh, roles that you could play. Um, your family, as you said, uh, served. They all attended West Point. Your three brothers, shown here, including you said your brother on the right uh, was a new young lieutenant and refused to wear his or didn't want to or whatever wear his uniform in the picture that's right so i what i take from that bruce is stubbornness is congenital in the pink family <laughs> i could be wrong i think it comes from my mom <laughs> and but that that family tradition goes beyond it the the fact that you have a family fabric of attending west point your son andrew who i know is no gas in air force uh, HH-60G helicopter pilot, uh, attended the Air Force Academy. But as we were getting ready for this, you also talked about the friendships that you formed. Frankly, I have college friendships, but we didn't live together. We weren't all of the same ethos. We were, you know, came to the University of Wisconsin from 
well, I guess like the academy came from different places and perspectives, but I don't think you get quite as close as you do in in a service academy. And so here's a picture of you and your college roommate. Yeah, Tim well, it was college. It was West Point. Yeah, the end. Tell me about that relationship and how you sustained it over years and years and years of moving around. And yeah, Tim was my roommate three out of the last four semesters. And this picture is from Korea when we got together to celebrate being promoted to captain. And then uh, we stayed in touch. He, he was here in Hawaii when we were in Hawaii. And then he moved to Washington, D.C. And whenever I'd go back there, I'd see, see him. And, and his wife actually went to the Naval Academy. And uh, I went to their oh, wedding. Wow. I yeah. went to their wedding at, at the Naval Academy. We heard John Paul Jones rolling over in the grave hello <laughs> but um their daughter just got married and you know we're still in touch we just had a, a reunion of about 20 classmates and their families here a mini reunion back in february thankfully we were able to pull that off so you know we stay in touch uh and we we have some special good friends but every five years we have a big reunion that that's pretty well attended and that's cool. And I don't have that from my college class at the University of Wisconsin. So um, that's a good part of it. But the threat goes beyond people you were actually at West Point. And then you do have an association of graduates here in Hawaii, on Oahu. Right. Um, how many members are there? I think in the West Point Society, there's probably 150, 200. Uh, something we started recently is trying to encourage more between the four service academies, Army, mm -hmm. Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. We had a golf tournament last month with those four academies. And um, we're looking at other things like maybe a, a ceremony, a remembrance type of ceremony on a holiday and a holiday party where we get current cadets together. From but the there are, academies. are you saying there are 150 West Point graduates on a relatively small population on Oahu? Yeah, I'm retired uh, and yeah. active duty. Um, for some people, I mean, for some reason, you know, military people get to Hawaii and they want to retire here. I'm not sure why. Because we're not idiots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we know that some folks don't don't appreciate living here in the middle of the ocean, but people like you and I do love Hawaii. So 150, and the point I'm trying to make with that observation, uh, Bruce, is that many of these people, I suspect, didn't become lieutenant colonels, colonels, generals. They served for a time and went into active life. And folks, if you or your young adults in your family are considering West Point, the Air Force Academy, the Naval Academy in Annapolis, or the uh, Coast Guard Academy, um, uh, an important thing to understand is it does not, it enables life and success beyond. And you can check the bios of important people in commercial and government roles. And it's not unusual at all to see, including the current secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, somebody who's a former army officer and West Point graduate. I think Secretary Kendall is a West Point graduate. And um, it, it really, everybody doesn't serve 20 years. In fact, most don't serve 20 or 30 years, but they are given skills of, um, leading and doing that enables success beyond so you don't have the goal have to have the goal of becoming a 12-star general to want to attend uh, west point or the other academies to improve your life agree i agree Whew. i was afraid you were gonna fight me on that <laughs> bruce um, let me take it <laughs> let me take a quick breath if i may uh, to talk about my show because jay gave me this opportunity to so I want to say from an Air Force perspective, because I am an Air Force fighter pod, even at this elderly age, uh, that on the next Pigments, Monday, June 13th, on Pigments, the power of imagination, imagine Top Gun, you. That's right. I'm going to talk about Top Gun Maverick, the movie, which I saw at the uh, Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum with my beautiful wife, Alejandra, in historic Hangar 79, with a eminently qualified Air Force guy to talk about a movie about a Navy school. 
because uh, Major General Dallas uh, Thompson, Dallas, not the city, I like to call him, uh, actually flew not just the F-15, that's what our, what our roots go back together, but the F-14 and the FNA-18 with the Navy, and then the F-16. Um, he's a great guy. We're going to re remember what awesome fighter pilots we were and give you a, a little extra special insight into uh, flying jets like that. Um, maybe remember a few of our own Top Gun moments. Okay, so, um, Chris, we're old. You know, you we you alluded to that, and I said it expressly uh, earlier. Why would why would somebody who's 16, 17, 18 listen to us? Let me rephrase that. What are the enduring elements of a military academy uh, education that are relevant today, that should be meaningful, that you think would be meaningful to a young person today in their lives? It gives you the foundation for life that is something that can't be taken away from you. The values and uh, duty on our country is, is the motto of the academy. And it is something that changes the rest of your life. Uh, Even now, do, you, do you, you talk to recent graduates? Do you still hear that? I'm playing yeah. a little devil's advocate here, but you didn't have a cell phone. You weren't on social media <laughs> because neither of them had been invented yet, Bruce, when you were there at the uh, military academy. So right. even in this very different environment, that still matters? Well, and we have, my West Point class has an official email group uh, forum where they try to keep it light and interesting and then a discussion group that you know if you want to bring up something that's a controversial subject and, and get the opinions of the other people who are on that forum you get it uh, you know and that's not from just again your run-of-the-mill person that's from uh, people who went to West Point and served in, in lots of interesting places we have uh, you know one former uh, president we have President of Costa Rica was a West Point classmate. So, you know, and four-star generals retired and, and other people who've gone on to really some interesting positions. So we get into some good discussions. And, and of course we do have a Facebook page so you can wish everybody happy birthday or whatever else. They try to keep that light too. So, so let's say that somebody, and we're gonna talk in just a second about uh, the process of trying to gain entry to West Point. By the way, truth in advertising folks, I did apply to West Point and the Naval Academy and the Air Force Academy and they all laughed, uh, was not accepted, rightly so. It's a rigorous process, but let's say somebody's just thinking about it. Uh, young man, young woman here in Hawaii, can they talk to somebody closer to their age? Is there a a way to to speak to somebody who's either a cadet or a young officer and say, hey, what's this about? Why would I want to do this? Rather there is than taking our word for it. Yeah, there is a West Point graduate who was here in Hawaii mm -hmm. who they could reach out to and say, hey, I want to talk about going to West Point and he can put them in touch with current cadets. Uh, so and yeah. how, how I think we're going to talk about that on the next slide as we talk about the process here. And right. I think, yeah, I think so. T talk to this slide if you could here. Right, so this the first thing the first thing is you have to be eligible and that's basic stuff like being a citizen and being not over 23 years old. Um, you have to be at least 17. Uh, so there's some certain basic requirements you have to gather all the information that you normally would gather for a college application. And there's a way to start an application online. And as part of that process, the fourth step, they will connect you with the, the local West, West Point representative. And he, he is charged with making sure that- He or she, Mr. Right. You in this class, case, all male class, so. Yeah, in this case, it is, it is a he. <laughs> um, and, and they will um, 
hopefully connect them with uh, current cadets who, who can tell them what it's really like, because I have no idea what it's like. That was 43 years ago for me. You have some ideas, but not a full picture. No, not a full picture. So that's the um, first four steps. So wherever you are, because we do have viewers outside Hawaii, wherever you are, they will connect you with the local representative. Correct. And uh, my experience, uh, not just from the process, but from advising young folks who were considering a military career, is that these representatives are very honest. They're going to give you the straight skinny. Yeah. Uh, they don't want you to wind up where you don't belong. And frankly, I didn't belong there. I would not have been a good fit with any of the academies at the time. I needed a different kind of um, tempering, if you will. And I got that in the university experience. But um, then once you've done all that, there are a series of more steps, right? Yes. You have to get a nomination. We talked about that. Congressman or senator, or there are also other routes through son or daughter of a military officer or prior service and prep school. Prep school is a year before the military academy, and you can get a nomination through that. Uh, yeah, so the prep, prep school is an option if you don't, aren't accepted to the academy or, or don't think you'll be eligible to get a year to do two things. One, be better prepared to competitively select into the academy, or um, two, decide that's not for you. It's, it's a good opportunity for those on the fence. And it gives you a uh, rounding academically that you mm -hmm. otherwise might not have. Uh, the medical examination, start that process as soon as possible because it's a long process and there are some pitfalls in there. Yeah, and it's it, those, the, the loyal viewers of Figments, which I know number at least one, my wife, Alejandra, thanks Alejandra for being that, uh, know that. Uh, my journey to being an Air Force pilot, well, not in the academy, was a long one because of a small color vision problem. Don't give up, but do start early yeah. because you never know what path you're going to take. Okay, sorry. So the fitness assessment, I would say, is, is probably one of the hardest parts. Even for me, I remember it being difficult, and I was in good shape. I was riding my bicycle every day to school. I mean, I was really in pretty good shape, but that's a hard assessment and it's hard for a reason. Is because if you go to West Point out of shape, you're not gonna do well. You're and your life time. will be kind of miserable. Yes. Right? And so let's this, talk, go ahead. go ahead. I would say the standard stuff that you do for any school, you know, your SATs, your grades, you know, your leadership, your um, community service uh, used to be Eagle Scout and, and Gold Award now for the woman uh, was a was a big deal. I don't think it's as big a deal as it used to be, but it certainly, I think, helps if they have that kind of background. Yeah, uh, and it's an interesting time. It would be, it'd be interesting to me to see what matters now if it's not Eagle Scout or the equivalent. Um, but let's talk, Bruce, before we wrap up here in just a few minutes, um, about what, what the benefits are. We kind of bury the lead here. Why go to the, to the military academy, to West Point or one of the other academies? What do you get that you don't get anywhere else? One of the, one of the things that you get is you get paid to go to college. Right. You get but there are many of them. What else do you get that isn't available? in any other form type of institution because there are military colleges like the Citadel, BMI, Texas A&M. So oh, what train, do you get at West Point you can't get elsewhere? They train you for, for a, a military career and a lifetime of service. And you also get the, um, I don't know, the imprint. I, I think that's probably a, a, a good word of mm -hmm. uh, four years of hard training and excellent education that stays with you for the rest of your life. And, and if you're fortunate, like me, the Army will send you to graduate school. 
they sent me to Stanford for graduate school. It and, seems to me that most most of the academy graduates, the various academies, have some opportunity for not just GI Bill funded advanced education, but there's there's ample opportunity to further your education uh, once you're on active duty, right? Right, and they tend to send you to schools, you know, for training you at each level that you go to to make mm -hmm. sure you're ready for your next job. One of the big things I would say is to make sure that a candidate knows why they want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll give you the example of our son, Andrew. He had applied to 10 colleges and um, he had said he was going to Carnegie Mellon. And then one morning he just woke up and he says, he was going to the Air Force Academy. And I said, why? And he says, well, that just feels like the right place for me. And I know I'll do well there. And it's not, yeah. not for me. You know, I didn't go to the Air Force Academy, so it wasn't for me. It wasn't for a girlfriend. It wasn't for anybody else. It was his choice yeah. that he thought that was the best place for him. Probably so the best advice you'll give all day. And I'll, I'll, I'll echo it or mirror it with a, a little different experience in that uh, I gave my, I, I went to my daughter Yateng, who was 17 at the time, and said, I need you to fly to the Air Force Academy and, and for an ROTC scholarship um, because you need to do it. You need that experience. I didn't care if she went to the Air Force Academy or not. She lost it. And she's a very even keeled. If you any of you saw her episode on figments, this is a supremely composed human being. She went uh, crazy and threw a tantrum. The only tantrum I ever saw her throw. The reason was it wasn't for her. I just wanted her to have the experience, but she knew it wasn't for her. She went to UC Berkeley in ROTC, got commissioned, served for six years, and now is a, doing very well as an executive at Google. Um, so you got to go to the right place. If you go there, you'll get an unparalleled experience, a very high caliber education, friends that last for a lifetime, and the ability to do really tough stuff, whether it's in the boardroom or the battlefield. And that can't be bought. And you don't have to buy it. Bruce, how are your student loan balances? <laughs> Never had one. Never had one because no. the government pays for it. Now you pay it back over That's the course cool. of many years, but it's a different thing. Hey, Bruce Fink, graduate U.S. Military Academy at West Point, class of 1979. Thanks for joining us on Military and Hawaii and sharing your experiences. I hope we've touched some folks who will consider an application to West Point or one of the other service academies. Thank Aloha, you, Bruce. Aloha. You bet. My pleasure. Well, thanks, folks, for joining us on uh, Not Figments. I almost said it again. So uh, on Military in Hawaii, please do join me Monday for Figments, The Power of Imagination. Remember, we've got a couple of playlists here uh, for both Figments, The Power of Imagination, Figments on Reality. And I, as always, want to thank Think Tech Hawaii, an amazing nonprofit that needs your support please go to their webpage and consider donating to their efforts to support citizen journalists like me and citizen guests who've served their country and keep serving like Bruce Fink. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.